corporate, general, and uh, commercial uh, aviation hasn't always gotten along too well in the past. Uh, do you foresee this as the dawning of a new era of cooperation? Well, first I take exception to the fact that we have not always gotten along well in the past. I think we have gotten along well in the past, but due to the uh, different mission that they are now on, they are in airspace that was formerly occupied by the military and the airlines to the exclusion of the general aviation people. Now they have the jet airplanes in their fleets and they share the common problem of flying in reduced airspace or restricted airspace. We expect to about double our force between now and Christmas. And what is your of the year? And what is uh, your force? Our force now we have about 145 people in plant. That's in the manufacturing end, accounting and the executive end, and uh, about 150 field men. What kind of people are you looking for? Uh, well, this brings up something else that I've noticed in this economy. These people that have retrenched have let good people go. People that are they're middle age or a little older and uh, twenty-five, thirty thousand dollar a year people. Now they're going to be lost people unless someone like ourselves come along and utilize their intelligence and their knowledge and their ability. Well actually Jay, this will not have any real strong a uh, effect on our class schedule primarily because our instructional program was not uh, carried in any part of this building except for the journalism program. We have made arrangements to move these classes to other facilities for the time being, and we hope within two or three days to be able to restore them back to their original place of business. The rumors have been flying out here that this could be a possible case of arson. Uh, we know you can't confirm or deny those rumors at this point, but can you tell us what led to the speculation? Jay, I think probably that in uh, any fire of this uh, size that there's going to be a lot of speculation. We have no reason to speculate one way or the other, and we're still awaiting a report from the fire marshal as to the cause and the point of origin of the fire. So in the meantime, we're reserving any judgment at all, and I would hope that others would. I can't tell for sure, but we thought it was worth a try because we think it's an important thing to get done. Is it an attempt at coercion? Are you trying to prod the governor a little bit, perhaps? No, I don't think so. Are you sending similar telegrams to the other candidates? No, just to these two. We are having a, a joint appearance with Benson and Bush at a luncheon, which is a similar affair, and we hope to do the same with the candidates for governor. We say that this man has no proof uh, that we intend to do some bombing. We don't intend to bomb anything. Uh, we say that he can't prove it. We defy him to prove it. Uh, we're going to meet him in court with a million dollar lawsuit for libel, slander, and everything else. We're going to file the name of uh, the National Committee to Combat Fascism, the Organizing Bureau of the Black Panther Party, and uh, we all will be plaintiffs.
No, I do not. Any more than you could say that uh, Boston runs the medicine of the nation or that uh, New York dominates the publishing industry. You can use that word if you want to, but having uh, watched television in Little Rock and Chicago and Seattle and Palm Springs, California, uh, I just don't have the feeling that anybody in New York is telling me what to think. I, I think it's a rather uh, mythical criticism. Well, have laid them off, come back, they're going to get the young uh, college graduates at a lesser salary. You know, I think we've all had a run-in with a vending machine at one time or another, yourself included. Who loses the most? The company from thieves or customers from vending machines? Well, I think that vending machines lose more from thieves in one way, uh, but in a simple machine like we have, that is reduced to a minimum. I imagine everybody, I'm kind of, kind of low because, you know, we've got our two best, one, two of our best players hurt and as far as the running game goes. And, but I think we'll have to regroup and just, you know, just come back this week. I, I think we'll be ready. Well, you have a lot of sophomores and a lot of juniors and a tremendous amount of spirit. I remember when we visited uh, during the Southwest Conference Tour and one ball game, one loss doesn't make a season or ruin a season. You know that. Uh, no, it, it, uh, it hurts, but... Uh, we're going to come back. We came back last year after getting beat bad by Ohio State. And we came back again, uh, again against Texas the next final week after them. So I, I think we'll come back. How did the Arkansas defense impress you? Uh, they they were a lot better than I gave them credit for. After looking at films on them, I thought we could uh, move the ball pretty well on them, as, uh, running as far as passing too. Uh, but uh, I guess they just got up for this game and being a conference opener and, and a lot more than we did, and uh, they really hit pretty hard, put the pressure on. We hope through this massive campaign to reach over 200,000 children between the ages of one and 10 years of age in order to prevent a rubella epidemic in our county. Are these children. immunizations lifetime or temporary? The vaccine has been in used for over five years and so far the children who've been vaccinated have had good continued immunity and their antibody levels have been just like the natural disease so we feel that this will be a lifetime immunity
Well, the National Foundation is delighted to cooperate in the overall campaign. Naturally, the March Dimes basic objective is to eliminate birth defects. And it's a very serious problem, and we're, we're hoping that uh, we'll reach the 225,000 uh, individuals for the drive coming up. Their plan is to get the people out of the low-lying areas, get the people off of the streets, get the people into the buildings. We worked hard, we worked diligently, but our works wouldn't have been worth anything if the people hadn't responded to the teaching that we had for them. We have emergency passes, we kept the people off of the street. We have a message center that we set up. We put our disaster plan into effect. We had distributed hurricane literature, what to do and how to do. And I think the thing that we learned about this hurricane, that people are good. People are so good and so kind if you'll just let them be good. It isn't just something sudden. It took, uh, uh, there's been a more or less of an evolutionary development in what you do in the protection and the survivability of the nation. So after 1960, the Cuban Missile Crisis, there was new emphasis as far as the, uh, our organization was concerned, what to do. They were found many deficiencies. And so there was a, this is a kind of a new environmental thing for us to cope with and much to learn that was new. And so it's been an evolutionary thing, and this is uh, of recent data. They came into the fallout shelter first of just buildings, and then a uh, further study revealed, well, what, well, how about the use of them? And so this becomes the final product off the assembly line as to how people can use them by assignment. And so it's nothing that's come of, of the moment, let's say. It's just one of these evolutionary things that developed. 